us here with Coach Ben Durham for the Coach's Corner. Coach, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing well and you? Great, doing great, Coach. Uh, well, let's just jump right into it. Let's talk a little about the game last week. Uh, uh, came out on the upside of things. And uh, after last week, how do you feel about uh, where we stand in our district and everything? Well, I'm very proud of our young men. Uh, we were banged up. You know, Rebel was very physical, hit us in the mouth. And, uh, you know, you got to give a lot of credit to their coach. He got them up. He got them ready to play. Mm -hmm. And uh, I looked at our kids at halftime, and, you know, they, they had those kind of those puppy dog looks. You know, they were nursing shoulders and ankles and knees. And I said, listen, fellas, this is for the playoffs. Mm -hmm. This is about two things. It's about heart and intestinal fortitude. The kids stepped up, and they came out, and, uh, you know, we, we really had a nice fourth quarter to, to win the game. Right. And that was a great road win. That's a good, nice little trip down there. So, uh, you know, they had, the, uh, they had the home field advantage, of Absolutely. course, and then, you know, we had the fatigue factor on our side from the traveling. Uh, well, uh, offensively, uh, how did how did we play this week, and who kind of stood out for you, and uh, who, who towed the load this week? Well, it was uh, you know Fuad again. He had 32 carries, like 392 yards, and like five touchdowns or something. But uh, really, what happened was Matt Dennis got hurt probably a little bit into the second quarter, and uh, you know we were reeling. And you know Matt is a huge part of our offense, and uh, not just carrying the ball, but he's just such a crucial blocker at the right. point of attack. And uh, when he was out. It was it was tough sledding there for a little bit, and they did some good things. They gave us a different defense we hadn't seen, and and uh, you know they kind of adjusted to our on balance stuff, so we had to uh, you know you know go back to some normal stuff, and mm -hmm. it took us about four quarters to just get it right, and we finally did. And Matt came back in the game, and and uh, we started running it off tackle, and and uh, we really uh, had a nice fourth quarter, winning twenty four to six in the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. That was the key. And then defensively, obviously, it was 24-6 in the fourth quarter. The defense had some key stops, too. You know, the, there was some missed tackling. That was a little disappointing. But it was so much. Uh, they did a good job of spreading us out and making us play in space. But uh, we only gave up 28 points. And in, in eight-man football, if you're only giving up eight points, you, you've got to you got to feel pretty good. Right. Um, and let's talk a little bit about that. We're, uh, we're banged up now. Any, who, who key uh, players, who, who's hurt and what part of their body is ailing after this week? Well, Matt Dennis has got a, uh, a sore ankle, mm -hmm. and, and Fuad Ahmed's got a sore ankle, mm -hmm. and that's not what you want to hear. But, uh, right. you know, we, we've been icing them all week. I think we're going to be fine by Friday, but uh, we are working on that. Tanks has got a sore shoulder, and Matt Brad McIntyre's got a bad knee. But mm -hmm. uh, So uh, we, we were walking wounded Friday night. And McIntyre was hurt the week before last. Yes, sir. So he played the offensive side of the ball for you this week? He, he ended up having to play both by the time it was said and done. Yeah, and so it's maybe a little worse this week, or is he getting better? I think, think he's getting better. Yeah. I think he's getting better. We tried to uh, keep this week light at the beginning to make sure we did do some tackling. Right. We tried to improve on that, but other than that, we didn't run a lot. We feel like we're in pretty good shape. We just wanted to make sure – that uh, we're healthy going into Friday. Right. Uh, anyone else that you're kind of concerned with, or is that just kind of That's, – Those are the big ones. Uh, so the ankles, you know, sometimes you never know about them. You can tape them up and people are okay on them and uh, ice them, but then, you know, sometimes they just seem to linger for the rest of the year. And like you said, it just kind of comes down to gutting it out and getting through the pain with it. Well, we, we, you know, I feel good about it because, uh, you know, we've got uh, – Tinsaw obviously is going to be a tough game, and this is for all the marbles. You know, you go next week, it's homecoming. It's not as a, a strong of, of an opponent as, as what we've seen. Then we've got a bye week, and then we've got an extremely weak team in the last week of the season. So we're going to be okay. Mm -hmm. You know, just this is an inopportune time to have some guys banged up. You know, we want to really go out and, and obviously uh, fight for a, a district championship. And, and you know, we're not going to uh, we're, we're not going to back down. We're going right. to after. Absolutely. Well, Coach, uh, let's talk a bit a little about Tensaw. How did they fare last week? I mean, I know this game is for both teams are undefeated in the district. Is that right? That's correct. Uh, so this is for the district championship. Most likely yeah. this is going to be in. Next week is a district game also, the homecoming? Um, for us, it's both of us, it's district the whole way out. They've right. got a couple tougher opponents left than we do. Right. But, uh, you know, I would say that uh, but this is still going to be in. For the way things seem to be stacking up, you know, yeah. slide, uh, short of some catastrophic key losses for both teams. Uh, personnel wise uh, yes these are these are the number one and two teams kind of in the district right, right now where we stand uh, what how did Tensaw who did they play last week and, and how was their game how did it turn out they played Franklin they beat them 40 to 14 which uh, you know uh, was impressive but that, that's the second time they played them so uh, I think you know the first time was much closer mm -hmm. but uh, you know they they've gotten a little bit better they got their uh, key fullback back David uh, our uh, Sykes uh, Josh Sykes and um, he's a heck of a load. And I tell you what, uh, 
he had a big game, and, and you know they, they just I think they, they really were physical, and Franklin didn't like that. Mm -hmm. And what's the you know you started off saying they're a physical team. Uh, what are we going to see out of them next week offensively? What kind of sets are they going to get in, and who's the key guys to be watched for us to they, watch? Us? They really do a good job. First of all, Joe Coates is their head coach. He was at Neville for a long time, won a state championship in 4A, mm -hmm. public school ball, and uh, they pulled him off of a tree stand to come out there and coach football. But uh, I tell you what, uh, they're going to run a pro-style offense. They're going to a pro set, you know, split backfield with uh, top, double tight ends. They do a lot of uh, misdirect direction. They're going to run the toss at you. Lots and lots of screens and play action passes. Mm -hmm. they, they throw the ball probably more than any team we've seen all year. Mm -hmm. Do they throw it down the field or is it mainly putting guys out in space to make plays? Well, they're going to try to utilize their big tight end, Farrell K. Uh, He's about 6'2", 190, and uh, he does a really good job of you know just getting up there and, and going and getting the ball. He's, he's tall, but he can jump as well. Uh, they're going to hit him on the post down uh, down the field. Mm -hmm. They're going to try to throw some screens to him. Mm -hmm. They're going to utilize him in a lot of different ways. And how's Coach Powers preparing the defense for what we're going to look at this week? Well, what we're trying to do is uh, we're going to try to do some. Uh, we're going to try to spy him, and, and, and we're not going to probably rush as much uh, as what you know a lot of people would like. But the, the screen's so effective for them that uh, we've got to be aware. We've right. got to be aware of what they're doing, and uh, we're going to try to double K he a lot to see what's going on. And, and just, you know, we're just going to be aware of where he is at all times. And who will be keying on him? Who and Neil. That'll be he and who? Neil? Neil. Brown? Um, okay, and so we got so we got a good game plan. And then on, on your side of the ball, the offensive side of the ball, what are, you, uh, what are we going to be seeing? Who's their key guy on defense? And what are you looking at bringing at them this week? Well, they have got two outstanding linebackers. Mm -hmm. um, Dylan Hopkins, number 54, will play the left inside backer, and then Sykes will play the right, right inside linebacker. He's number 17. Both are very physical, good tacklers, but uh, we're going to try to get some misdirection, mm -hmm. you know, uh, try to use uh, that to slow them down a little bit, and then uh, we're going to try to pound them. We think we're, be we're better up front, and we're going to try to show it. So you feel like our interior line, uh, those guys, are, that, that's where we can have an opportunity to maybe win the game and push the ball down the field a little bit? Absolutely. I think we're going to be we're, – we're, we're much better than them up front, I believe, and uh, I think we've got to show that. The, the question is going to be, can we score enough points off that uh, because of their wide open uh, offense? Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we're just going to have to see. But I also think we've got some mismatches uh, with, with uh, Zach. They've got a, a couple short corners. And, uh, you know, Zach's, you know, 6'4". It's time for him to have a breakout game, we feel. Yeah, and he's definitely got the talent to do it. Absolutely. Um, so, Coach, uh, where do we stack up in the overall scheme of things right now uh, in, the, in, you know, in the state, I guess, in eight-man? Sure. Where, where are we ranked, and who, who's kind of emerging to the, to the, to the uh, top of the pack right now? Well, right now, um, it, there's the top four teams is Kemper Academy. They're, they're ranked number one. They beat Tensaw 48-12. Right. Uh, Central Academy is number two. They beat us and uh, Tensaw, so they're obviously pretty good. They don't play until the last game of the season uh, to see who's going to win that district. Um, Kemper just beat uh, North Sunflower, and North Sunflower, uh, obviously we, we beat in week one. They're going to play Central, North Sunflower and Central play, mm -hmm. and that's going to be a huge matchup on that side of the district, or mm -hmm. the other district. Uh, on our side, uh, Tinsaw's ranked number three, we're ranked number four, we're both five and two. Uh, you know, they've been real competitive in our scores versus the same teams, and right. you know, really this is just going to be a great football game on a Friday night. and. Uh, just hope everybody comes out because I think this is going to be uh, eight man at its best. Right, I do too. Uh, and this is the game we've been pointing to all you know all year. Now, all they, although we've prefaced it all year with one game at a time, and we got to do yes, this sir. before we can do that. But here we are now, you know, and it, and it is it's a huge game, and, uh, the, the biggest game you know of the year anyway. Absolutely. And, and we we uh, as I went to Florida last year after you know after uh, the state championship game. I'm walking on the beach and I knew that this was it. You know, you, you get a sense and you prepare 365 days for really two or three games, and this is one of those right. games, and we've got to be ready Friday night. Right, and people, you know, you like I say, you don't want to look ahead, but there are always those games you circle on your calendar, and this one, I think. This one is circle. <laughs> Here we are. Uh, well, Coach, I, I look forward to this game this week. Uh, I know, you know you've done a great job preparing the kids all year, Thank mentally you. and physically, and, uh, you know, uh, you know, we're banged up, but I'm sure Tinsaw's banged up too. You know, everybody is this time of year, and that's just football. I mean, 
we talk to our kids about that. If something hurts mm -hmm. right, or something doesn't hurt right now, you're not playing the game the right way. That's right. So you're going to have to fight through it. Our kids showed that last week. They were very resilient, and uh, you know, I don't expect anything but uh, you know them coming out and going after them. Right. Well, uh, folks, I, I look forward to uh, seeing a lot of people come out to the game this week and support Briarfield. Uh, they're five and two, and uh, this is uh, potentially for the district championship. Uh, you know, we uh, don't want to, you know, sell short to our last two opponents, but uh, this is by far the toughest opponent we will have faced in our district this, this year to date. Uh, we're going to have a good game this week, and uh, look forward to the kids need all the support they get. We're a little banged up, so uh, it sure helps make those knees and ankles feel a lot better when there's people out in the stands going crazy. I know that. Absolutely. Uh, so folks, just come out and support the Rebels this year, uh, this week, and uh, for the rest of the year also, uh, look forward to seeing the Rebels go deep in the playoffs this year. Uh, we want to thank, once, as always, uh, Lee Denny and Anna Denny for letting us uh, use the facility here in the Lake Pro and the Lake Providence Country Club. And uh, Coach, I appreciate you coming out. And thank you. And good luck this week. Thank you. That's all we have this week, folks. Stay tuned. We'll see you next week. Good night.